We're going to talk a bit of England first because obviously Thomas took all getting the job yesterday. And yeah. it struck me, knowing you were coming in today, that you worked under the previous two overseas managers in Tvenjoran Eriksson and Fabio Capello mm. and got game time and was well thought of by both of them. So they were quite good to you. I mean, certainly for Capello in the initial part of your time with England. Yeah, no, 100%. Like I said, Sven was the first and he brought me um, into the World Cup squad um, and I was only just 19. So that was an amazing experience. Um, and then from then I stayed in the England squad and in and around it and um, Capello then um, was really fond of me especially at the beginning anyway um, and I really liked him he really disciplined my game he was picking up on um, minor details defensively anyway which also I think affected me going forward some games mm. um, but he was really good at the beginning um, but I just think towards the end of his tenure um, he kind of lost the dressing room the communication wasn't great the way he spoke to the players um, and we was losing games, so yeah. you add that together, and it's um, it's only a matter of time. Is it an issue for players if they're in a dress room and it's an overseas coach? Is it ever an issue? I, mean, I suppose it's is it a problem? I don't think it is. His language barrier was really bad. Yeah. Um, so I think sometimes he would say things and not mean it, and sometimes obviously you could take that wrong. Yeah, so you, like you, it was broken you, English. Isn't there, yeah, is of course. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. sometimes I think he didn't actually mean, but sometimes the way it came out yeah. and how aggressive he did it, sometimes the lads were like. You're killing me, yeah. And yeah. I've not really done anything wrong. So um, I think that was lost a little bit. Um, but like I said, I don't think it's... Like I said, I think if you set up the team right, the training sessions are right, the way you speak to the players, the way you get the, the group together, it doesn't matter where the manager's from. Yeah, and all the signs are that Tuchel's good at that. He had good relationships with lots of players at Chelsea. He's got yeah. Anthony Barry in there, who's a good communicator, a good coach. So the, yeah. the signs are good, aren't they? No, 100%. Like I said, I've always liked Thomas Tuchel. I think he's a fantastic coach. And um, I think this group needs a world-class coach. That's what I've always said. We've got world-class players. We've got mm. some of the best players, one of the best groups we've ever had, if not the best. And we need a top-top manager, and Thomas Tuchel definitely is that. We is need it? someone to get us over the line in-game, don't we? I mean, if, if, if there was criticisms at Gareth, he certainly got to all the latter stages, but sometimes the, the people question the decision-making, especially yeah. the, the, the game the management. Wembrook. Well, you would hope in Tuchel, who has gone out there and turned big games around and got yeah. them one mm. finals, that we've got that. And that's one of his strengths. You've seen him do it in-games. And I think, like we said, with Gareth, like I said, Gareth has done a fantastic job. But there was times in games where you was looking at it going, oh, it's crying out for a change. Maybe we need to stiffen it up a little bit or maybe go more attacking actually the games here there for the taking mm. and we've seen that a lot of times I think with Gareth he was quite defensive minded um, so I think with Thomas I think it's um, a fantastic appointment um, like I said this group is for me is sensational some world world class players and we've got a top manager now yeah absolutely. You're, you're doing your badges I'm uh, yep. assuming you're coaching badges how, yep. how do you feel that, that pathway feels to you now does it feel like it's got a, a dead end to it or do you think that will change um, like I said there's been a lot of talk about it Um I went into, I love football, so mm. I literally love football, and I always thought that would be my path. So I went in, um, had a little break after I retired, and went in straight onto the B, um, got a job at Leeds, was working at Leeds, and then started on the A, um, and was loving it. Um, there's a lot of talk in football, obviously, about that pathway. Are you going to get the opportunity? For me, it was like, well, listen, let's get in the door and then just see. Yeah. Um, I'm always one of them who said, listen, if I'm good enough, hopefully I will get the opportunity. Yeah. Uh, I, I, yeah, there, there is. A, I'm sure there are a few coaches out there today thinking, well, you know, we're going to go through this process and we may end up at St George's and we may get them in the England age group, but yeah. ultimately they'll look abroad again. So there will be a few people feeling that, you know, they're a little bit let down, English coaches. No, they? 100%. And like I said, this conversation has been going on for a long while. Um, and especially now, like I said, especially most of these clubs now are owned by foreign managers. Um, so they are going for some of the foreign coaches. Um like I said, we have got some good coaches. Have we got the best coaches now? I don't know. There's something what needs to be done. There needs to be a change. But also there needs to be given that opportunity mm. because these coaches are not going to get better without giving the opportunity. They're doing the badges, but they need that chance. Um, and that's where you learn. Do you, do you want to coach Aaron or do you, or do you want to manage? I mean, I know that there is a difference, isn't it? Step up, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely a step up. I always thought to myself I would be a better coach. Um, I thought I'd be a better assistant. I thought um, the manager side of it, I'm not sure if that would be my strength, but... Listen, I went in there with an open mind. I was like, listen, I enjoy coaching. I enjoy helping players. I think I can see things before they happen. I think I can see things to improve a player's game. Um, so I just went in there in that sense. And I thought, let me start in probably the academy level. So I went in at Leeds uh, under 18s. And I thought that was a perfect age group. They're getting there just before the 21s and the first team mm -hmm. where you can still develop them um, and you can tweak things with them. You can sit down and try and develop them. Um, so I, look, I love the process of it. Um, I love the, being on the training pitch. Um, but like I said, I've just had two young children yeah. and the hours were crazy and um, 
nah, I just wanted to be at home with the family. Yeah. So yeah. I've had to put it on the back burner for now. Yeah. Which coach you played under? Do you do you most take your style from? Did you most admire? I won't say there's a particular one. So I think you try and take bits from everybody. Mm. You have to find out what, what what you are about yourself. But you do take bits from everyone. Like you said, um, like for example, people would probably say you would never say someone like Sean Dash. But Sean Dash, I took a lot from, especially in my later years. Yeah. Was just his, his um, everyday on players. Literally, there's just relentless. There's no, there's no ups and downs. You literally know what you're going to get. And I thought that's where Sean Dash was one of his biggest strengths. Was every Monday you come in, you could lose on a on a side, win, lose a draw. It didn't matter. On a Monday, you knew exactly. We're straight back at it. We're back at it. Let's put that to bed and we go again. Mm. And um, that, especially over my later years, I thought some managers, I some of the bigger managers I worked with, so, were so-called bigger names so to speak, could hold on to things and they drag it out. You've lost on a Saturday. And we're like, so the emotion gets in the way. The emotion will get in the and game. And we're still talking you. about yeah. the game on Wednesday and we've got, we might be playing a midweek game yeah. and we're still talking about the last game. I'm like, all right, we do need to talk about it and address what's happened, but we do also need to move on. And yeah. I thought that was, well, especially with Sean Dash, was one of his strengths. Uh, uh, I mean, I, I, it's, I'm, it's a bit harsh to say he struggled at Everton. He kind of has really. Everton is struggling as a club on and off the field. Have you been surprised at the way that's panned out for him? Um... Yes and no. Um, I think he's had a it's a tough gig there. Yeah. Like I said I I was at Everton. I had a, um, a good few years there, but um, you've seen they've made a lot of mistakes and probably the transfer window they spent a lot of money and put them in a really bad situation. And I think like what Sean's done since he's gone in there, I think he's done a fantastic job. If you look like without the points deductions last season, um, he's got no money to spend. Hmm. He's had a little bit this year. They've not started quite well. They've obviously picked up recently, um, but I think he's done a fairly fairly decent job of with what he's had the yeah. tools he's had. At Spurs, I mean, it was a very exciting Tottenham team you you played in, and we were just chatting before the, you came on air that there are parallels really to the the current side. It was a very front foot yep. attacking side back in your day, and it kind of is now, isn't it? Yep. I mean, what do you make of the current Spurs under Andrew? Are you a you a believer? Do you think you can go on and win titles playing that sort of football? Yeah, I'm not so sure. Um, like, don't be wrong, I love Ange and I love the way they play, but I also think there's times in games that it's just. There's too many forward players on the pitch. Um, you've got your fullbacks bombing on also. And I think you just get left exposed. I think there's every team in the Premier League will score against Spurs, I feel, at this minute of time. Mm. Um, and they've got a great back four. But if you're left with just Romero, Van der Ven and Benton Kerr sat in front, then teams are going to pick you off. Um, and for me, there's, there's in-game management at times. I'm looking at it going, maybe we need to put on a two number sixes maybe and just stiffen it up. Like the Brighton game, for example, is 2 0 up. Paul Hawksby and Andy Jacobs Monday to Friday afternoons 1 till 4 on AM on DAB via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker TalkSport